It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> Okay guys, I haven't done one of these videos in a really long time. You know, maybe a year ago or so, a few months ago, I was testing out a lot of YouTubers' recipes. And I kind of stopped for a while because you guys were asking for more um, recipes that I was writing. Today I thought it would be fun to go back to that, except with a twist. Hey guys, I'm Kenestasia Veg. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello. Welcome. I hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every single week and you don't want to miss out on them. So one of my favorite things to make is lasagna. I find one of the most poorly executed vegan dishes is a vegan lasagna. So I thought I would, you know, head to head some, some vegan YouTubers and see who has the best lasagna. So today I am pitting Gaz from Avant Garde Vegan against Rose from Cheap Lazy Vegan against Caitlin Schumacher. And I'm going to see which lasagna I like best. I also wanted to give you guys a variety of different types of lasagnas. So one is going to be your traditional bechamel ragu lasagna. The other is going to be the quick, easy, cheap version and then, but delicious. And then the last one is going to be a dairy-free, gluten-free, grain-free, um, version of a vegan lasagna. And I'm super excited because today our video is sponsored by Skillshare. We love Skillshare. They sponsor us all the time and we love the support. Thank you so much for supporting vegan creators. If you are unaware of what Skillshare is, it is an online learning community. They offer amazing courses for, you know, us creative and curious people. There is a link in the description box where you can learn more about them and get a very special deal, but more about that a little bit later. All right, before I start this, I did want to point out that I am very aware that each one of these YouTubers has a very different cooking style. It's not really like picking the best one. So I am aware that they, you know, are very different cooking styles, very different levels of cooking. So it's more just based on like flavor and technique and reviewing the recipe for you. All right, so the first recipe that I'm going to test out is roses from Cheap Lazy Vegan, mainly because this is super easy. I would say out of the three recipes, this one is definitely the easiest. She just shows you how to make, you know, a basic delicious sauce and then a tofu ricotta, which actually is very similar to my recipe with a couple differences. So I'm super excited to try hers. We've gone ahead and made those elements because you guys have seen us make tofu ricotta and like marinara sauce, but I'm gonna go through everything that she uses. So it's a very, I would say in true rose fashion, it's easy. There's not a lot of ingredients, really inexpensive ones. She's perfect for a rose and her cheap, lazy veganness. So with hers, you pretty much just need the tofu ricotta. You need the sauce, which we've gone ahead and made. It's just cans of tomatoes, onions, garlic, paprika, garlic powder, that sort of thing. She also suggests that you can add in optional add-ins like seitan pieces, fresh basil, vegan sausages, or shredded cheese for topping. So I've gone ahead and grabbed some vegan shredded mozzarella because I thought it would be cute. And then just oven ready, noodles and that's it. So we're just gonna layer them. I've gone ahead and preheat the oven to 400 and she bakes this for 30 minutes. I will say with the instructions, it says now layer the lasagna, starting with a layer of sauce on the bottom of the lasagna pan. You can do this however you wish. I just like to make sure the noodles are always in contact with something wet so it cooks thoroughly in the oven. So I'm thinking in terms of layering, I'm going to do sauce, noodle, and then sauce, noodle, ricotta, and then repeat that with the mozzarella shreds on the top. And you could, of course, put them in between, but in her recipe, she's saying just for topping. So I wanna follow that. All right, so let's do it. Because I'm making three lasagnas, I'm trying to use kind of smaller little dishes here so that I don't have lasagna for the rest of my life, but we can freeze any extras. That's great too. So I'm gonna go ahead. I've just put the sauce into this little Pyrex measuring cup with a little spout. I just find that it's like nice and easy to do. You can spread it around. Right away, I will say that I do like the chunkiness of this sauce. I don't know, I just like it more when there's some chunkiness to it. And then noodles. If you do run into this issue, you can always just break the noodle oh. and add it like that. And I like to save these for if I'm making like a lasagna soup or something. These are great noodles to throw in there or like any noodle soup, you can just throw them in there. All right. For the bottom layer, you'll see I added three. This is just more for structurally to keep it, you know, with a solid bottom. The rest of the time, I'll probably just use two of these per layer. All right, so we have our sauce there. I'm going to go ahead and just add the ricotta. I'm just using my fingers, I find is the easiest way to do it. I probably would have wanted more sauce, but 
I don't know, we'll see when we get to the very end. Especially since I'm using a pretty small dish, I think that this is going to be enough sauce for like this and not a larger size pan. This recipe makes a lot of ricotta, which I do love. Okay, and then repeat that. All right, so sauce on top. We have a little bit of leftover ricotta, so I probably could have used that. And now, cheese. So I'm just using shredded vegan non-dairy mozzarella, and she says to use that on top. I mean, like I said, you could probably put it in between, but I'm trying to do this recipe the way that she wrote it. So she just says for topping, that's what we're gonna do. I think a nice layer of cheese on the top is nice. So the first one is done. All right, I have the other lasagna hanging out in the back there. I'm going to bake them at the same time because I don't want to pre-bake any of them and then do the taste test because I don't think I'm getting like the full experience if it's not like warm and gooey and at its best. The second one that I have here is a gluten-free, dairy-free and grain-free. It is from Caitlin Schumacher or Shoemaker and the recipe is from the blog fromybowl.com, which is her blog. So this one is more of your healthy version or if you have a lot of food intolerances like grain and gluten and all those things. Whereas the other two is more traditional or our like meaty part of the lasagna, we have lentils and vegetables. So like lentils, carrots, or the noodles part, we have eggplant. Now she just says eggplant, so that's usually traditional eggplant, but the store that I went to didn't have any, so I have Japanese eggplant that I'm going to use instead. I don't find there to be a huge difference in how you work with them or flavor Flavor, the sizes are different. So our medallions are going to be a little bit smaller, but I kind of like that. For the cheese, she suggests making her recipe for vegan ricotta, which is on her website, which I did do. I will be honest, not my favorite vegan ricotta recipe. I definitely, I mean, I obviously love mine. I really like cheap, lazy vegans. This one, I just get an overwhelming taste of nutritional yeast and that's it. I mean, it's heavily flavored that way. So it'll be interesting to see how it is with everything else. I mean. The description for this definitely says it is free from gluten, dairy, and grains, but not on flavor. So, I mean, she's making a good point. All right, so the first thing we have to do, it says, is to bake these guys for 25 minutes. It doesn't say to rub them with oil or anything, just put them on a parchment tray, so I'm going to do that. And while those are in the oven, then I'm going to make the lentil filling. So, let's start with the medallions, get them in the oven, and then make this lentil filling. So I have two lined baking pans, and they're not oiled or anything. Let's lay them out and bake them. I will say that I find it to be a crazy amount of eggplant. It says three large eggplants and these aren't even large ones. These are just like Japanese ones. So they're smaller and it makes a ton of eggplant. I'm wondering if maybe this is meant for like a huge tray. It just says large casserole dish. It doesn't really specify a size. Maybe it is because these tend to shrivel down. That's why we're testing these recipes. All right, now we are making our lentil filling. She says in a large pot, this is a large pot, add a little bit of water and then cook onions. And the amount of onions for this is half a yellow onion, but it doesn't say large, small, whatever. So I have cooking onions and half of it, it just doesn't seem like a lot of onion, but again, it's all preference, right? I'm not like saying that there's anything wrong with these recipes. I'm just kind of giving you my notes in case your taste is more like mine. So yeah, I probably added too much water, but that's fine, it evaporates. So instead of oil, she's using water, which I actually think makes sense and do love. I, I love, you know, a good oil-free recipe, depending on what it is. And yeah, if it is like a healthier whole foods recipe using, you know, the water definitely makes sense. So I'm going to cook those with a splash of water. Oh, it says or oil. We're going with the water over medium heat for three to four minutes until translucent. All right, now we are adding carrots, crushed tomato, and tomato paste. I know that these are diced tomatoes and not crushed. The reason for that is that there were no crushed tomatoes left in the store when I went grocery shopping. Things run out. Mix it all together. Once it's all incorporated, we're going to add the lentils, the broth, the parsley, and the basil, and then simmer this for 30 minutes. For the broth, I'm just using better than bouillon mixed with water. And then we have our green lentils. I'm sure you can use whatever lentils, but her recipe says green, so that's what we're going with. She uses fresh basil, didn't have any. So I'm using a tablespoon of dried and then fresh parsley. I'm gonna save some for garnish. We're going to 
mix all that until it's incorporated well. And we're going to bring that to a boil, reduce it to a simmer and let it do its thing for about 30 minutes. Okay, one note about the tomato sauce. So in this recipe, she just says, one and a half cups of marinara sauce of choice. I decided since I was making Rose's marinara sauce anyway, I might as well just double it. So I'm using Rose's marinara sauce for this recipe. But again, she says you can use whichever one is your favorite. You can use mine if you want. You can use more of a like a ragu style like we're going to do with gazes. With this one, maybe a store-bought one because you're doing this work. The third recipe I'm testing out, like I said, is gazes. So we're going to make the ragu at the same time while we're waiting for Caitlin Schumacher's lentil filling to simmer because this also has to simmer. So for this one, he makes a ragu. We have aubergine and courgette, which is, if you are not from the UK, that is eggplant and zucchini, red onions, mints, chopped tomatoes, herbs, balsamic vinegar, cracked black pepper. Um, this one says a heaping tablespoon of mixed herb. I just went with Italian seasoning, but he does say that instead of mints, you can use, or like ground vegan ground beef, you can use mushrooms or lentils. So we're going to make that and then the filling, like the creamy, like cheesy part of it is a vegan bechamel, which is actually very similar to how I make my lasagna, which is marinara and bechamel. It's so good and easy. But one special thing about his bechamel is that we are going to infuse the milk. So we're going to infuse that with onion, bay leaf, nutmeg, and seasonings. First thing that we need to do is make the ragu and then we will infuse the milk for the bechamel. One last thing is he does use just traditional noodles for this. So these are just, again, oven ready noodles. Let's make the ragu. So the first thing we are going to do is the same as pretty much any other tomato sauce or ragu recipe, which is onions, garlic, oil, and celery. Vegetables, he says to finely slice them. So the onion is finely sliced instead of like minced or chopped. And so is the celery. So the celery isn't minced either. And then of course, garlic. Adding a pinch of salt, this is going to help draw out the liquid and help it sweat. All right, while everything's cooking, I'm going to infuse the milk as he suggests to do. So I'm just going to add the milk onion, bay seasoning, peppercorns, salt, and nutmeg. And that is on a low heat. And we're just gonna stir that every now and again, it says. We have our zucchini or courgette. We have our eggplant or aubergine. We're using Italian seasoning. And pretty much the same thing. We're going to mix that together and then cook that for like three to four minutes as well. All right, I've gone ahead and switched the pots just because I definitely need a larger pot for this and only really need a medium pot for this guy. But to Gaz's ragu now, I'm going to add the four cups of mince. Pretty much four cups. And then again, give that a good stir, mix it around, cook it for about two to three minutes. Now I'm going to go ahead and deglaze the pan with balsamic vinegar and then two, he says two tins of uh, tomatoes. They come in this size and they come in double the size. I assume it's probably the normal ones and not the double. So I guess we'll see once I add everything. And our second tin of tomato. Oh, really get in there and like deglazing the pan is like going in and making sure that you get all the little bits that are on the bottom. They have just super yummy flavor in them. So you don't want to leave them there. So with the tins, because we have the seven ounce tins and then we have the 14 ounce tins. So if it says two, I assume it's two of the smaller tins. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a pretty thick sauce. Probably what he's going for. Now I will say it never says when to add salt and pepper to the sauce, but it is listed in the ingredients list. So I think that I'm going to, just add it now. I'll probably add half the salt and then taste it once it's done simmering and then decide if I want to add the rest of the salt. Okay, we are back to Caitlin Schumacher's recipe. So we have our eggplant, we have our sauce, we have the filling, we have the ricotta. These eggplants, like I said, they did get a bit smaller. So keep that in mind. So for layering the lasagna, she says spread half a cup of marinara. So it's half of the total marinara. I think that she asked for, oh no, a third. Spread over the base of the large casserole dish. I'm using this guy. And I assume just like with regular lasagna noodles, this is being used to help the eggplant not stick to the bottom of the pan. 
Now it says spread half of the lentil filling, which seems like a lot. I mean, I'll say right off the bat that I think if you are, like if you, the grocery store near you doesn't have regular eggplant and only has Japanese variety, I think that you should probably double the amount of eggplant because of how small they shrivel down to and you need overlap. Now we're going in with a third of the ricotta. I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did with the other one, which is just use my fingers. It's kind of, a, you know, it has its own layer. Another layer of eggplant. This one breaks all the rules that I'm used to with uh, lasagna. All right, so we're making the bechamel. We are melting margarine, vegan margarine, over low heat. Now I'm adding in the flour and just mixing it around with a spatula until it resembles a paste. Key is that you want to cook out the flour, or cook the flour so you can cook out that flour, like that raw flour taste. So it is super important that you let it cook for a few minutes and just stir it constantly. I would say anywhere between, depending on how much flour you're using, anywhere between like two and five minutes. Okay, so after you have your paste, it says to gently or gradually whisk in the infused milk a little bit at a time. Now it doesn't say to remove anything out of the milk. I assume that we should. On its own, it's really good. It's a really great bechamel. It's really delicious. It's flavorful, but yet subtle. It's super creamy. I love the flavor of it. So I have to keep in mind that this will thicken up a bit as it cooks in the oven as well. But it's lasagna, so why not add some vegan cheese? So I have just some shredded mozzarella that I'm going to dump right into the pot along with nutritional yeast, which is what he suggests if you wanna make it cheesy. So I'm gonna start with the sauce on the bottom again. This is a nice thick ragu. I usually just use like a marinara. So I think we can do three across with these. Ragu, it's probably about a cup. And now the bechamel. I'm gonna start with a cup and go from there. I would probably do a little bit more than a cup here. Just be very mindful of what your top layer is going to be. So you definitely want it to be the bechamel. All right, I think after this one, we can do one more layer. I added a nice, big, thick layer of bechamel on the top because I like a really big, thick layer. We have cooked more eggplant, so now we can go ahead and make a thicker layer. Now, I will say right off the bat, even if larger eggplants were used, I still think this is more of like an eggplant casserole. So for the top layer, she's saying add the rest of the ricotta, and then add sauce and then swirl it together. So this guy has to go into the oven for 35 minutes, uncovered as well. I already have two in the oven, so this one's just gonna have to wait. All right, while we are waiting for our lasagnas to cook in the oven, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to let you know about Skillshare. Like I said earlier, Skillshare is an online platform. It's an online learning platform where you can take courses, almost anything that you can think of, productivity, how to take care of your plants, photography with both you know, a professional DSLR and also your iPhone. One of the classes that I'm taking right now is actually teaching me how to kickstart my creativity. This class is called Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity. It looks like this. The teacher of this class is Andy J. Pizza. And for someone like me who has been kind of doing the same thing but is a creative and loves to create things and you know, creativity comes and goes so it's, really easy step-by-step -step guides to really kickstart that creativity and put it into whatever art or food or photography or whatever it is that you're creating, maybe a product. And it's a great way to, you know, maybe you lost your job during the pandemic and you're trying to figure out what's next. So these courses are really great for that. So exclusively for you guys, Edgy Veg viewers, Skillshare is offering the first thousand people to use my download link. It's in the description box and they will get a free premium membership. And after that, it's only $10 a month, which is a, that's a great deal to learn whatever it is that you need to learn in your life or want to learn. All right, we have our three, I was about to say pizzas, they're lasagnas. Um, we have our three lasagnas. We have cheap, lazy, vegan. We have the avant-garde vegan. And then we have Caitlin Shoemaker. I don't know. Let's start with roses. Mm-hmm. It's good. I it's definitely like, make it. Mm -hmm. I would definitely make it too. It's giving me like everything I want from a lasagna without the time commitment of making like 12 different things for different layers. It's a perfect like weeknight lasagna. Oh yeah. I like bring to a dinner party because nobody else is a vegan. We try maybe the gluten-free one. I mean, mine's kind of a pile. 
I'm getting some lasagna flavors, but more like man, you know, like manicotti, as mm -hmm. that was called when it, it's like a lasagna, but with eggplant. I'm getting more of that or like a casserole. Like the flavors are really good. I just don't know that I would call it a lasagna. Yeah, I feel like I could use more sauce. Yeah, definitely more sauce. I kind of wish the filling was saucier too. Mm -hmm. The flavor is really good. I really like the flavor, but it's definitely coming off as more of like a stew or casserole. I would also do this, but instead of the eggplant, use gluten-free noodles. That you you can buy. I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, it just looks like everything I remember. It looks like a gas recipe. Sure. It, it really does, that like rusticness to it. Really good. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, I'm just always gonna love the lasagna with bechamel. And it's like complex. There's like layers of flavor. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was not difficult to make and it didn't take that long. It's a bechamel for me. Yeah, I mean, it's really good like i'd eat it in a restaurant and pay for that happily. yeah they're all good but i think gaz wins this one. Oh yeah in terms of like best lasagna i think yeah definitely i think it's gaz if i was gluten-free my only qualm would be that it ends up in a pile kind of like this so i would really want there to be some gluten-free noodles but if you're not into like store-bought gluten-free things then i mean it's delicious it's just not lasagna for like a plant-based whole foods food though it's, it's good, good. Yeah, honestly it's good. if i'm perfectly honest i didn't think i was gonna like it and i and i do like yeah. it's really tasty it's just not a lasagna and then rose like rose always delivers because it's just it's easy you can find all the ingredients it's no time there you go guys you win this round what should we do next let us know in the comment section like what is the recipe that you want us to try like is it a mac and cheese from three different people and then let us know who you want us to pin against each other all right, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring yet another video and supporting creators like me that are vegan. Don't forget that the first thousand people to click the link in the description box get a free premium membership from Skillshare. And after that, it's only $10 a month. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day, a great week. Do whatever you're doing. I hope it goes well. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you love lasagna, give this video a big thumbs up and let me know if you have any suggestions for people to pit against each other by leaving them in the comment section down below. Okay, bye.